In manifesting, the techniques we use are not as important as the states we are in. Techniques are simply tools to help us achieve the desired states. By understanding the concept of states, we can see that our external reality reflects our internal state. Our thoughts, beliefs, and emotions shape our reality. To manifest something, we need to align our internal state with our desire. This means feeling and living as though we have already achieved what we want. States refer to our inner emotional and mental states, and they play a crucial role in the manifestation process. When we shift our state, we change our thoughts and emotions, which is then reflected in the physical world around us. On the other hand, techniques are only helpful if they assist us in changing our state. Merely repeating affirmations without shifting our inner state will not lead to successful manifestation. Instead, we need to focus on changing our state and embodying the feeling of already having what we desire. The way we perceive and experience life is through our state, which can be compared to an innovator. Within creation, there are countless versions of ourselves living in different realities or timelines. Our current state determines which version of ourselves exists in the present moment and on which timeline we are situated. For example, if we desire to win the lottery, there is already a version of ourselves that has won it. However, simply knowing this does not bring us happiness. We want to personally experience that reality by embodying that version of ourselves. Our state, shaped by our thoughts and actions, is the key to manifestation. Repeating affirmations without truly believing and feeling them will not bring us what we desire. If we continue to focus on lack and believe that our desires are out of reach, they will remain out of reach. This is because our internal state creates our external reality. To change our state and manifest our desires, we must use techniques correctly and live in the end result. This means visualizing and feeling as though we have already achieved our desires, rather than focusing on the lack or what is yet to come. To ensure effective execution of a technique, it's essential to perform it correctly. Instead of being focused on the fact that we are using a technique, we should experience it as if it were already a reality. Just like we are presently engaged in watching a video, we should feel the technique in the same way. This is what it means to feel it as real. When affirming, it's important to avoid doing so with the intention of making something happen. Instead, we should affirm what we already have, as if it were already a reality. By doing this, we will experience the same level of realism and authenticity as when we declare that we are currently engaged in an activity. This is what it means to live in the end result. The key to manifesting our desires is shifting our focus from the lack of our desires and instead thinking and acting as if we already have them. This requires a conscious effort to ignore the present reality and solely focus on the end result. We can ask ourselves whether we would be thinking or doing what we currently are if we already had our desire. Using our imagination, we can visualize ourselves having what we want and imagine how it feels, how we act, and what we engage with. However, we must be careful not to turn living in the end into a technique, as this would be counterproductive. Living in the end means knowing that it is already done, just as if someone from the future came back and told us it had already happened. To bring our desires into reality, we must shift our state of being. This shift should occur naturally after we have successfully lived in the end and acted as though we already have what we desire. When we change our state, we become the person who already possesses the desire. Our thoughts and actions throughout the day will naturally align with having our desire, without any effort on our part. These thoughts will become our default mode of thinking, feeling natural and effortless. We will no longer focus on the lack or feel the need to use techniques to remind ourselves of our desire. One effective way to shift our state and embody the feeling of what we desire is through sensory vividness. This involves engaging all of our senses to fully experience our desired outcome. It means not only visualizing but also feeling, hearing, smelling, and even tasting the experience. By doing this, we immerse ourselves in the feeling of already having achieved our desire, which helps us shift our state and manifest it into reality. Another important factor in manifesting our desires is letting go of resistance. Resistance refers to any limiting beliefs, 
doubts, or negative emotions that hold us back from manifesting what we want. When we hold on to resistance, we create blocks in our energy field, preventing us from attracting what we desire. To let go of resistance, we need to become aware of our thoughts and emotions and identify any limiting beliefs or negative patterns. Once we are aware of them, we can work on shifting our state and replacing them with positive thoughts and emotions. This will help us release resistance and attract what we desire into our lives. Faith and hope are essential components of manifestation, as the law of assumption relies on the conviction that our desires are already within reach. To determine if we have successfully transitioned into a new state, the key factor is the thoughts or words that arise from that state. Lacking faith implies not believing in the existence of what we desire. Since our experiences are a faithful reproduction of our state of consciousness, a lack of faith will result in continuous failure in consciously utilizing the law of assumption. If we find ourselves in a situation of debt, the solution is to imagine being free from debt. We can visualize the sensation of all our bills being paid off and assume that feeling, allowing our imagination to make it a reality. We can take ourselves to the end and contemplate how we would feel if it were already a reality. We can think about what we would see, hear, how others would perceive us, and what actions we would take if this situation was already true. These inquiries help us adopt the state of being free from debt. However, it's essential not to force anything while assuming the state. We should start by assuming a state that surpasses our current thoughts, and naturally, thoughts will follow from that state. If you found the content valuable, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with friends. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel and click on the notification bell, so you never miss out on new videos. Thank you for watching, and we will see you in the next video.